What's going on, Final Drive folks? Welcome to another episode of the Final Drive here at Sour Kids Production Studios. It is myself, Alec. It is DeAndre. It is Kenneth behind the boards. As you guys clearly can notice, there are two of us in the studio today. We both get the, the love seats, which I am a fan of. Nothing against the futon, but <laughs> just to like lean on my back like this and still sit up. I like that. <laughs> DeAndre, how you doing, my man? Doing great, man. Doing great. Can't complain? Can't complain. I mean, obviously, it's um, been a rough week for a lot of people, for everybody, mm -hmm. especially with the recent events going on. Yeah. Um, but besides that, trying to make the best out of it. You know, we've had a lot of um, great things come from this week as, as far as, like, media, you know, especially Star Wars fans. I'll say that. Mm. Star, Star Wars Celebration. I've been right. keeping up with that and you know, <laughs> Kenobi. So, And I'm guessing you folks are probably wondering, why are we talking about Star Wars and the media stuff instead of football. Well, today, quite simply, it's been a really slow week in the NFL. There's only so many lists we can talk about, only so many topics we can make up within the hour. So today, we just decided, you know what? There's two of us. We're both big nerds in, into what's going on in the world of, you know, Star Wars, superheroes, things like that. So today, we're just going to talk about this for an hour. So we'll be back to the NFL content next week with training camp and OTAs, you know, heat ramping up at that point. But today... Just have a fun chat about the things we love the most besides football, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, things like that, yep. that really, really make this thing kind of fun, right? So, uh, I guess let's address the big elephant, Yonder. Obviously, today is Friday. I'm sorry, Saturday. Kenobi dropped yesterday. We watched the first two episodes. Kenneth has watched the first uh, first episode. For the sake of Kenneth and all the viewers out there, we're only going to talk about the first episode and kind of just our views on the show in general. Okay. So I'll just you know keep it simple and non-spoiler free. Also, you're going to be dropping a review on your channel as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll drop that later tonight. So, so, so you can see about episode two's thoughts with Yandere Javante on his channel, Dre and Jay. Appreciate it. I got you, my dude. So. Kenobi, what, what 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 were your thoughts on the first episode and kind of just the feel of the show in general? I'll definitely say, like, right from the beginning, it definitely tugs at the heartstrings. Right. Just because of how it has the recap. And then right after the recap, you're like, oh, damn, bro. Like, I can't believe I'm watching old Kenobi again. Mm -hmm. Like, seeing Kenobi on the screen for the first time and, and seeing all the events that transpired over the first film to the third one. And then guess what? We jump right into Order 66. And as, again, as many Star Wars, like that's honestly one of like, I have that up there with Game of Thrones, you know, blood, Red Wedding, as far as like, damn, like did my damn moments where I'm like, you know, I got to watch this again. I got to watch this again. Um, <laughs> so yeah, seeing that was hard. It was tough. Um, and I know there, I, I mentioned this to you before the show started, but um, with what happened recently this week, there were actually people who thought that they should have cut that scene out. I'm, I'm a person that I don't believe it. They should have just because of um, this, where Order 60 sits and how much of um, impact. It's kind of the, the, the step off point. Yeah. Like it, it has yeah. a huge impact. It's, it's honestly one of the biggest moments in the galaxy in Star Wars, you know, in, in, in its time period. It's truly the fall of the Republic and the Jedi. Yeah. It, it changed the power dynamic. Mm. Um, so, you know, I'm fine with them leaving it in. I'm, I can see the warning because I, I think now they put a warning on the episode. Oh, okay. Which is crazy. But, yeah. You know, it's just it's just one of those wrong time, wrong timing situations. Um, but besides that, just jumping into Obi Wan, seeing Kenobi, how broken he was, was definitely like, it was tough. It was tough. I'm not going to lie. It was tough seeing Obi Wan right. the way he was, but you understood, especially come, where he came where he was coming from, uh, the amount of people that he lost over the years that transpired from Qui-Gon, Anakin, Padme, and not even talking about those, but just like even if you want to include the Clone Wars uh, series, losing Satine as well. So, like, yeah. I understand where his character is at. Um, the Inquisitors, they're pretty, they're pretty dope. Reva, I like them. I yeah. thought it wasn't at first, but... For what they are, you know, they, they I like them. There, I, there's a lot of people, like, they're divided on Reva. They feel like she's, like, too much. 
I don't know. <laughs> you feel the same way? <laughs> yeah. For no reason, yeah. Yeah, I get that. Well, yeah. I think, and I think, and I saw this on Twitter, somebody's little theory. Uh, in the very beginning, you know, when uh, Order 66 happened. There was a black girl. There was a, a little black girl yeah. who was a... Uh, uh, and yeah, that's what yeah, I, I and because the, the camera zooms in on her, so I would think. I mean, obviously the Inquisitors are Jedi's who survived, you know, the fall, and then they turn to the dark side. So I, mean, I, I would assume that that was just her. Oh yeah, that has to be. And maybe that's why she's so bitter towards Obi Wan because, as far as they know, he's like the one big hitless Jedi left. Is Obi Wan Kenobi? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I, I mean it. We kind of gotta see where what her relationship with is with vader because mm-hmm. maybe that's something that's important like maybe vader was keeping tabs on her personally like trained her personally so so yeah. like maybe that's like her motivation is hey let me help you out and give you the guy that you've always wanted which is obi-wan you know maybe she knew that. yeah yeah maybe she knew that <laughs> yeah 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 you're yeah. right yeah yeah and right. i think it's kind of crazy because I feel like, you know, when we, when I saw the tree, <laughs> hey, you keep your face, okay, keep, I'm keep it still. Keep it straight. Hey, we get the. That's what happens when you watch yeah, two I episodes can't. instead of one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, my thing, when I first saw this trailer for the first time, right, it almost gave me like Spider Man No Way Home vibes in the sense of like when, you know, Alpha Millennia's, you know, Dog Hawk came out. Mm-hmm. It's like. Damn, like, you know, that was so long ago. So much has happened, you know, since then. And here I am, you know, older now, and I'm going to see Doc Ock or Green Go- William Defoe's Green Goblin or them bring back Toby and Andrew on the big screen, you know, and they're going to tie it all into – like, that really happened, right? Yeah. And the same with Obi-Wan and the Father of Republic, and, and obviously Anakin's going to be in this show, you know, whether it's, you know, as Vader or flashbacks. Like, you're thinking, damn, like – all this is going to connect together. Like, I'm going to see Obi-Wan, you know, on the screen again. Because, I mean, after episode three, and, you know, at the time, I think the prequels got a lot of hate. Unnecessarily, especially when you watch the new sequels. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that's what, you know, killed, you know, killed it for, I mean, look at Hayden Christensen. What what has he done film-wise since episode three? Trying to think. Hey, I like Jumper. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like you know, I mean you, but you get what I'm saying right? yeah, like, like yeah. The, the prequels were just cr- trashed so much like we never thought we'd see these characters let alone mentioned in another movie or show mm-hmm. let alone you know get their own show to kind of tie up everything that the fans you know needed to see yeah yeah I completely agree I, I think like you said it was it was the sequel trilogy and how divided that was, it left a kind of a bad stain, a bad taste uh, for Star Wars fans. So I'm glad that people appreciate the prequels. I've always appreciated them. Like, Bro, I've, same. I've always thought they were I've great. I've always thought they were good. Um, you know, I never thought they were top tier. Like, of course, Phantom Menace isn't the best one. I still enjoy it. It's still, because I'm, I mean, I love Darth Maul. That's one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. So Phantom Menace, that's like, I love it regardless. Tag of Clones. Writing could have been better. I think that's been probably have. yeah, sh- should have been better. <laughs> Writing um was definitely the worst part about the movie, but I still enjoyed it. There were still a lot of memorable scenes. I mean, come on, that whole Geonosis, mm-hmm, the battle you know, Geonosis, yeah, man, like <laughs> so. Uh, I I appreciate it for that, and it's it's honestly it's crazy to see like well, I want to give a special shout out to Ewan McGregor because like the fact that. He hasn't been Obi Wan in what 17, 16, 17 years. Because Revenge came out in what oh five. Yeah, oh five. Yeah. So for him to come back and kind of just have that character already, like, um, you know, get back into back into character that that quick. I, I think maybe I mean you could honestly say that Ian McGregor always had that character. Like he always was in character right. uh, as Obi Wan. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's like he never forgot it, uh, and that's what it did. It. it didn't seem that way like right when he jumped into obi-wan um i think he also said that he wanted to go lean more toward lean more uh towards alec guinness's performance of obi-wan like right with some of like his mannerisms and how he talks and i think that's what he's trying to go for now uh especially being five what is it five years older because that's when the show takes place five years later um so i think that's great for him 
and just seeing this journey that Obi-Wan is taking and he's continuing to take on Tatooine. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's tremendous. So, yeah, and I think another thing, uh, really, that's something cool to see is just Hayden Christensen like at these Star Wars events, you know, with Star Wars Day going on these the, over the the week. To see him like you know at these press conferences with fans and you know answering questions like, w like it was crazy to think that you know Ewan McGregor would have come back to be Obi Wan, right? Yeah. But no That's one, one no one would have thought Hayden would come back to do a Star Wars project as Anakin Skywalker, right? Yeah. And because he was he was the most hated one. Out he of was a scapegoat. Prequel. Yeah. Of the prequels. And you know to see him, uh, you know just to ha just to have a good time and smiling and. Uh, you know, at these conferences, you know, interacting with the fans, it's cool to see. Cause I'll, I'll be honest with you, DeAndre, I don't know what the hell he's been up to since oh five. I couldn't tell you what Hayden Christensen has done there since is, Revenge of the Sith. There are a few movies I know. Yeah, he was in Takers. I remember that one. Okay, Jumper. Hey, yeah, that's about it. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, Hay Hayden's been a uh, low key, but. Hey. But to see him, you know, and like he said that he watched, you know, uh, the Clone Wars and and uh, other projects to like understand the character better, and I was like, you know, he's really, you know, committed to to getting this right. And it's real funny because I think at uh, Star Star Wars Day, right before Obi Wan dropped, you know, the guy had asked uh, Hayden, "Is there anything else you want to say to the fans?" And he sits there with the mic and goes. This is where the fun begins. So yeah. I was like, ah, like he knew what he was like. He knows the assignment. So yep. like, it's cool to see Hayden. I'm excited to see him probably within these next couple episodes. It's honestly, it's great to see like the, how much, the how much base, love he's getting. Yeah. How much, well, not, not even just him, but just like these characters in general, like the fact that we can love all these like multiple versions, multiple actors that have played them. Like we love Ashley Etstein's Ahsoka Tano. We love Rosario Dawson's mm -hmm. Ahsoka Tano. We love, Ewan McGregor, and we love James Arnold Taylor as Obi-Wan. We love Hayden Tr Christensen and Matt Lanter as Anakin Skywalker. Like, you know, we can we can appreciate all of them. Right. And I, I feel like they all feel appreciated. Um, so I, I just like that aspect of it. Yeah, because I feel like, you know, it's kind of like we didn't think – well, we always wonder, like, what happened in between 3 and 4 for Obi-Wan. And, like, you know, the prequels – we're kind of real, it's a movie, so I get it, but it was kind of short on time as far as Obi-Wan and Anakin's relationship and how it grew and developed, mm -hmm. like in between two and three and, you know, whatnot. And the Clone Wars helped fill that in a little more, but now with the live action, you know, adaptation, obviously, maybe we'll get to see how this impacts both of them, uh, whether it's flashbacks, whether it's, you know, um, because there's a part in episode, the second one, mm -hmm. you know, where it, it hits you like, damn, like, this is going to be tough. Yeah. So it's just like, I'm excited to see, you know, how this turns out for, because like you said, it's great to see these characters being brought back to the screen. Because I think we all thought after, you know, Re Revenge of the Sith, that that's where the story ended for these guys. Yep. Like, I'm, I'm happy as well, just seeing them back. Um, I think it made Star Wars better. Right. <laughs> it definitely cancels out a lot of the toxicity that has been <laughs> trending for, for the various years since the sequel trilogy came out. Right. Um, so. And it's uh, like Javante, like Javante always brings his point up when we talk about Star Wars. You know, Star Wars easily has the ability to be like the biggest thing. It can outdo DC. It can outdo Marvel. Oh yeah. When it, when it's, when it's done right. When everything is right. Yeah. yeah. Easily. And I think the biggest thing is getting the prequels right in the sense of like, um, you know, tying all this back in together. It, it will attract, you know, people like us, but also the older folks who maybe grew up on the original trilogy. They can see these new stories being written and kind of redeem some of the things from the prequels. Right. It gets them hooked. And and that's why I kind of like about the way Obi-Wan is shy is because the way it's filmed is kind of like, it has that prequel vibe, you know? like a New Hope vibe to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, that and also like the the prequel, like, you know, the prequels from Revenge of the Sith, like uh, it definitely carries. Did the you whole... say prequels or sequels? Yeah, I said prequels. I thought you said sequels. Yeah, <laughs> I, I said, said I, sequels. I, I, I said like it has that prequel vibe just because of um. There's one scene, and just talking about the Inquisitors, like mm -hmm. Re Reva. You know, one one thing that people talk about with the prequels is uh, George Lucas and how much of a fetish he has for you know limbs being chopped off. 
So, you know, when you, I watched the first episode, yeah. and, you know, you have that one lady uh, in the... Like, you have no right here yeah, in the outer rim. And... Exactly, yeah. You have no jurisdiction in the outer rim. And then Reva just snatches off one of her damn hands. I was like, oh, man. Like, okay. Like, that. that, that, is, that is something from the prequels. You right. Know? And it's like, you know, it was one thing with, like, you know, Mandalorian and Boba Fett because, truth be told, they're just not Jedi or Sith. Like, you know... I, that's that was one of my worries with Obi Wan was like mm-hmm. how are we gonna tell the story you know Jedi and Sith to where with Mandalorian and, and Boba Fett you know it's it, it's bounty hunters it's people with guns like how are you gonna make the lightsabers look how are you going to make this feel like a Star Wars true Jedi story right right and from what I've seen in the first two episodes they've hit it out the park agreed yeah like I'm <laughs> I'm excited for. These next four episodes. For sure. For sure. Um, one thing I also got to point out is like how big, how great of a job that, you know, the people behind Star Wars were at keeping Leia secret. Right. In the first episode. Because right. she, was, she was introduced in the first episode, right? Yeah. I'm just remembering that. Okay. Yeah. Her, <laughs> I, was yeah. Saying, I hope I didn't spoil it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I know she was in the first episode. Were there? I never, I never noticed those ones. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, uh. Or maybe, like, I could have saw them, like, maybe showing, like, a little cameo from Leia. Like, especially since you have, I heard that Jimmy Smith's was return, returning as Bell or uh, Organa. Yeah. So I could see something like that. But to actually see her ha- have, like, a couple scenes in this uh, series, I was like, oh, okay. Like, like it's, more, it's, it's, it's no spoilers, but it's like a, it's like a mixture of the Skywalker twins. Yeah. Like, you would think it's more about Luke because, you know, Obi-Wan's on Tatooine and Obi-Wan's mission is to watch Luke. But mm-hmm. from what we've seen, there's a healthy mixture. And it's, all, it's always – those two characters have always been important. Like, they are right. these Skywalker children. So. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But, hey. Yeah. Regardless – I'm excited. Yeah. The prop- first two got me pumped. I was going to say props to the actress portraying Leia because right now, I mean, I think she's adorable. I'll say that. <laughs> and then also, like, I feel like she's done a great job of capturing both her parents, like how they act, like Anakin and Padme. Like, you see her looking at the starships out of the tree, like <laughs> seeing which one's leaving, which one's coming in. And, like, that's Anakin. That's an Anakin trait right there. And then, like, her taking, you know, talking back to her cousin. I, oh yeah! Like, I was like, okay, that is that is a Padme right there. So, it's and nice like how um, you know, Ghana tells pa- or, uh, <clears throat> Leia that <coughs> man, y'all just kill me today, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm like, I'll go grab one here in a second. I'm I'm good. <laughs> the show must go on. <laughs> yes. But um, when he tells Padme or Leia, like you know, you have to be a senator, and then Leia's like, I don't want to do that, and he's like, well. <clears throat> You have to be a leader for the people. It's like that's almost the same way Padme was, you know, yep. throughout the Clone Wars and in the prequels. Like, like every little reference, every little nook and cranny you could think about, they're gonna tie it all in together. Mm-hmm. So, like the the ship that you made for Luke. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I know where that's from. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Uncle Owen, better than me. Shit, she, she would have been threatening me. I would have ratted him out right away. Right away. Yeah, he's like, he's over there. He's over there. Yeah. Snitching. No, but I'm excited for what what else is to come. How about that burn by Uncle Owen? Little like, does he know that he will get the burn in the future. Uh, <laughs> 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 I got a message from Lord Vader. He yeah. says, "Now is the time to laugh." Oh my god, that little is, orphan that is, Andy. <laughs> that is one of my favorite Robot Chicken Star Wars moments. Is that one? <laughs> little orphan, orphan Andy. Andy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he uh, goes, you know what? It was funny back then. then. It's it still funny, funny then, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, it's just <laughs> love it. Yeah, we love Star Wars content, but like I said, I, I, the the way this is going right now, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, if I had one complaint about that, the first episode was the bounty hunters at the end. Like, Le- oh yeah, Leia should have got captured within the first five seconds. <laughs> they were they they were I like how like a branch. 
Yeah, they were just jogging, and like she went under a branch, and they somehow they just couldn't. Go like, under <laughs> the they couldn't. It's like a, a, a restricted area in a video game. Yeah, like come on, man. You could just you clearly you, you could pass it, but they just can't. I just I just felt like they were like, okay, we need to make this scene a little bit longer, so just. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I, I, I'm excited to see what uh what goes on from here. Yeah, I think I'm very hopeful through these first two episodes. For sure, same here. So and and what's crazy is we yeah. like from the first two episodes. That's everything that's pretty much been the trailer. So that, yes. So there is still like so much we haven't even seen yet. Yes, the, the, yeah. that was my thought. And I texted in the group chat last night. Like, what do you think about like all those shots from the first two episodes? Were in, in every teaser, every trailer. Yep. So now we're in the dark. We don't know what's going to happen come Wednesday. Who knows? I'm terrified but excited. Yeah. But uh, as far as the rest of Star Wars, I mean, Star Wars Celebration has been lit. Uh, they showed a trailer for Andor. Yep. Lit solid. I'm, uh, I don't really know why. I still don't know why he got a show. If I'm being serious, like, who knows? his story, you know, we know what happens in Rogue One. Like, I don't know what else you could really... Yeah. Yeah. I guess, but it's just like what I don't I don't know what else you can really show. I mean, I like the direction of the trailer. It definitely looks like it's has that Rogue One vibe. Yeah. You know. So yeah, for that's, sure. That's something that I enjoy I'll enjoy. Um as far as his character, yeah, I'm not really sure what where they can really go with it. Yeah. You know. Uh he did mention in Rogue One, like, I've I've done things for the Republic, things I'm not proud of. So like, you know, that's something that hey. Maybe like a Pay for higher bounty hunter. Or, yeah, like some shit like that would yeah. be kind of nice. So but we'll see. Cause I mean, obviously those are clone troopers in the trailer. Like when he's a, uh, there's a shot of clone troopers in the in the, uh, Anandor trailer. Are you talking about when they were like in that little facility? Like without, they weren't wearing the armor, were they? No, they were wearing their armor. Those are their clones. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Pretty sure they're clones. I yeah. could easily be wrong, but I, thought, I, I yeah, I remember, I remember seeing that, and also the the gunship. Yeah, because that's not that's not an empire. No, no, no. Keep going. Can't kind of explain the trailer right now. So he has it. Um, he has it rolling. <coughs> yeah, those are those gunships. Are gunships. Well, not that. But like that, that 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 just shows that um, you know, seeing the gunships. This takes place like right after the fall of the republic. The fall of the republic, because they did, the empire doesn't even use those. Oh, uh, not quite there. No. Come on, Mothra. No, it's coming up, I promise you. No, not this. See, I thought that's what you were talking about right there. It's coming up right there. But those are clone troopers. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it makes sense because from, from what we've seen in the Bad Batch, the Empire didn't go from clones to stormtroopers right away. Right, yeah. Like they kept the clones around for the very beginning of the Empire. Yep. So, I mean, it makes sense. But, I mean, well, like you said, I, I don't know what more purpose there is for Anandor, but, I mean, we'll see. Hey, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Like, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> But there's a, there's a lot of other shit too, like Ahsoka. I'm yeah. excited for that. They just dropped a um, trailer today, I believe, or it was like a little teaser. Yeah, somebody recorded it on the yeah. cl- the classic cell phone footage. Yeah. It's not officially out there, people. You don't <laughs> don't look it up right now. Um, but they showed like her, uh, Harrison Dula, uh, I think uh, what's his name, Mina Masad, the guy who played Aladdin. Yeah, like he commented on the Ahsoka trailer and was like, "Oh yeah, I'm excited to see this show." So there's and there's always been like that rumor that he's gonna play Ezra Bridger. So that would make sense. I think I think it's nice that we're finally getting some Rebels uh, content in live action too, because I think that's a a low key underrated Star Wars. It's a good show, just minus the lightsabers. Well, yeah, it's just if Rebels was shot the same way with clone, like the Clone Wars animation, oh, I yeah, think a lot it, of people will love it. Yeah, but the animation kind of just throws you off. That's what. That's why it was hard. Like it was hard for me to get into Rebels. It, I actually didn't start watching it until. What this past year? Yeah. 
Yeah, Tales of the Jedi. I heard about that. It's like a prequel series that's going to focus on characters like Qui-Gon, uh, Count Dooku, uh, Ahsoka, as before they were Jedi. Like, go, heading before into they get Jedi taken. order. Yeah. yeah. Not before they were Jedi. Like, it's not going to be the whole show before they were Jedi. But, like, before they were Jedi, to them being young Jedi Padawans, to being, like, you know, rising through the ranks. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm... <coughs> There's Star Wars Jedi. Um, <clears throat> I, can't, I forgot the name. Survivor, yeah, Jedi Survivor. Oh, yeah, the game. And I mean, if, um, the first one is great. Yeah. Oh yeah. Underrated. Banger. So I mean, Star Wars game. I'm excited for Star Wars. Star Wars got all this content pumping out left and right. The shows. And I mean, honestly. Say what you want about Boba Fett. It's an okay show. But, like, everything else that they've done, as far as, like, post-sequels, they've nailed. Oh, for sure, yeah. They've, 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 they've gotten it right. Even, so. yeah, but because Boba, like, there's still some things that I can watch and be like, this was nice to see, but. If they just take out the, came- the cameos and focus more on Boba Fett. But that... then again, maybe the dude's spinning, maybe that just, that alone, maybe just ruined it for me yeah it was it was just <laughs> i don't know i, I think they should have just made him more mit of this menacing figure on tatooine versus him trying to be this savior versus like the guy who had a near-death experience and now he just suddenly wants to be, be good yeah, yeah. Like, which like i get because like, i mean he, he he is you know a bounty hunter exactly like give him give him a little bit of I, if they would have gave his character a little bit more edge i think it would have been better yeah i mean he's a son of Django. yeah but um, we have Star Wars. Was a Jedi or not Jedi? Eclipse coming in twenty twenty seven. But <laughs> I mean, hey, seeing that trailer, they gave us a nice. date. They, they gave us a year. Date. So uh, that's. I mean, even look, but looking forward to that. Like that's four years from now, and I'm I'm excited to play that. Right. Like that's that just shows you like the hype of Star Wars. And um, have you have you heard about like what they plan on doing with Mandalorian season three? Like some of the plot points. No, what are they gonna do? I think, um, so it's Bo Katan, I think, is going to be like the villain, kind of like the antagonist. Ooh, okay. Mando goes back to Mandalore. Okay. Um, which, I mean, it was kind of teased in Book of Boba as far as like him, was it going to the waters mm-hmm. to, you know, swear to the creed again after taking off his helmet? Mm hmm. Um, Bo Katan, you know, obviously Mando has the dart saver. That was always going to be a problem, even though. The way Rebels showed, it shouldn't be a problem, but I guess they're retconning that small little detail because, yeah. as you know, in Rebels, Sabine Wren gave Bo Katan the Dart Saber without combat. She just said, Hey, you can have it. You can lead these people. But well, Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that could, that's that could be a good way of explaining it. Like, hey, like, it went wrong because, you know, that's, that's, we didn't, we didn't follow tradition, so now we should follow traditions this time. Yeah, I can see that. That's a good point. Good job, Kenneth. That was a great look one. at you. He knew the assignment. Yeah, look at you. So Bo-Katan could potentially be the uh, uh, the antagonist? Yeah, yeah. That's what I've heard. Okay, I mean, I trust what they're doing with Mando. Yeah. And we know Grogu's back, even though I, I kind of... Kind of outgrew Grogu. I wanted to move on. I'm sorry. I, yeah, no, I agree with you. I, I mean, he's he's cute and all, but I mean, I'm kind of ready to see Mando without as much Grogu. You you had the perfect send off for him, but I think the problem with that was was that people remember the sequel trilogy, so they didn't want to think that Grogu died, you know, with the Jedi <laughs> Temple after Kylo Ren or Ben Solo destroyed it. Yeah, I'm going to just say one more thing about the sequel. Now I know why Ben's name is Ben. Yeah. yeah. Figured that out now. Hint, hint, cough, cough. Watch episode two, Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, moving on from Star Wars, is there any other, any, any other Star Wars notes you want to get out? Uh, or anything else that dropped? I know John Watts directing a kit. 
Star Wars, I think, show or movie yeah, that yeah, focuses uh, on uh, kids, but it's not kid friendly. So right, because like, after he stepped out from from uh, Fantastic Four, he yeah. he took up the Star Wars project. But it, I mean, that kind of shows like how big Star Wars is. Is like, hey, I can. Hey, I mean, it. it but it will but having said that, it will make or break you though. That is true because look at the Game of Thrones writers. Yeah, when they dropped, they like D and D. They dropped it because they were like, hey, we're focusing on Star Wars. And that's you know they ended up not going through with it, and we got left with that sorry ass season eight of Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. Um, trying to think of what else did they announce? Pretty sure, yeah. Um, High Republic series. I think yeah. they're doing some something with High Republic, Acolyte. There's that as well. Um, which I'm excited for those shows. As well, just because of the fact that it's going to take place in a different timeline, separate from, you know, the Luke Skywalker uh, saga. So that'll be interesting. But everything else, yeah, I feel like Star Wars Celebration was a success this year. Yeah, they're I'm hyped for a lot of the future projects. Oh yeah, Skeleton Crew with Jude Law. I, I. We have no clue. We have no clue. No, no, that's that's not it. Wait, hold on, is it? I'll do it with Oh yeah, that's it. Yep. Hmm. It'll take place after the Return of the Jedi within the timeline of the Mandalorian and Ahsoka, so potentially could tie with all those things. We'll okay. see. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not like I'm fine with a lot of Star Wars stories taking place within the Skywalker saga, especially spinoffs. I yeah. just would the movies. I need the movies now to focus on something else. To move forward. To move forward. Move forward and not copy and paste. Either move forward or move backward before you know, like the old Republic. Like do something like that. Yeah, because clearly that they they have not learned. Well, they learned for they learned now. You know, because they got grilled. Yeah. With the sequels, but um. We'll see what happens. I'm excited for the future of Star Wars. I'm excited to see what all transpires. Um, in the world of Marvel and DC, anything you want to talk about, or you got any questions you want to debate between me and Kenneth? Ooh. Any hot takes you want to throw out there? As far as DC, I mean, there's these. They dropped some new suits for some of its movies. So they had like the Flash and Supergirl suit on display. Looks good. I like the Flash suit. I know a lot, there's a lot of people actually like hate it. They prefer the old one, like the most recent one that Zat Snyder had. I prefer this one just because it's more of the tights. Maybe those are just the... Snyder fans. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm, it's hard because like, I love... A part of me wants the Snyderverse to happen, like the Snyder Cut. Or, you know, like his own universe. Because I was a big fan of some of his films. Batman v, v Superman was the only one where I was like... Could have been better, Zach. It sucked. Could have been better. It sucked. But, like, I love Man of Steel. That's, like, one of my favorite superhero movies. Um, so, hey, when I see the fans online, sometimes I'm like, okay, y'all got to move on, bro. <laughs> there, there's, there, there's legit some that will say, the Batman it was trash, man. I'd rather have, like, make the Black Bat flick movie, you know? Like, bring that one back. And I'm just It like, would have been cool, but. Yeah, I'm, but I'm like, bro. We don't need it now. This they literally just gave you one of the best interpretations of Batman that was straight from the comics, straight from Batman the animated series, and you telling me like it Greg Gotham too. Yes, like come on, man. It wasn't like Chicago or New York like in the Nolan. Exactly. Movies. Well, it looked like Gotham. Exactly. So well, we're gonna see Flash. Like everything about the Flash movie, like as far as who's involved, I'm excited to see. It's just like what their purpose is right because like from the leaks a lot of it has been like oh we're gonna re like you know get rid of a lot of zat snyder's um stuff in the process like that's what the, their flashpoint is is like let's remove all the snyder verse shit yeah like there's i think their one leak i heard was that um zod kills superman as a baby like in that that version i guess maybe they do that scene again in man of steel except you know when um, Zod tells his one of his uh, commanders to shoot down the ship. Maybe in this version, he actually does shoot the ship down, killing Superman in the process. Yeah, that's I think, I think that's what they're trying to do. 
erase everything Zack Snyder had done. And then that's why that way they have Supergirl in that universe. Oh, okay. I mean, pretty much, yeah. The yes, yes. And then you're gonna yeah, have a, yeah. and then you're gonna have a DC without Superman. Yeah, that has what that has been what um you know we've been we've been talking about this like, as far as what DC's new Justice League with Superman repla- replacing Ben Affleck's Batman with what we got Batgirl now so yeah Batgirl Shazam like I I, I would have to hope. I would, yeah, that's what I'm saying, I would just have to hope, like the the sole purpose of the Flash has to be to reset the entirety of the DC universe. Yeah, like can't you can't sit there and tell me that you're gonna pick, you're gonna nitpick, pick and choose what you want to keep from the DCU. Exactly, like, like, that's just not gonna work. Like I'm gonna get rid of Henry Cavill, but I'm gonna keep Jason Momoa and Gal. You know, yeah, like, that doesn't like, make sense because it just it's, it it would be confusing to the fans at that point. Exactly. As to like how oh how are Momoa and Gal Gadot still in this, but yet. Cavill and, and Affleck are not, but you have Keaton and you have Supergirl and Batgirl. But what about Shazam? Like it just you have yeah. to reset everything and start fresh. Because I heard they were going to put like Keaton, they were going to make him like the Nick Fury of the universe, where he's kind of like just that over. Batman, universe. don't do that. Like come on, man. Batman don't does not need to do I'm that. Like, bro, if you want Keaton back as Batman, like have him have him in an established universe where he's the older Bruce Wayne, and then you have your Batman. Terry McGinnis. Yes. Yeah. Introduce Terry yeah, McGinnis. Sure. Have your Batman Beyond. Yeah, because yeah. I, because not even I don't mean to cut you off, but like my problem right. with the Flash is like when they announced Michael Keaton was going to come back, I my first thought was why, like, and you know with Bat with the character Batman, honestly, not until Robert Pattinson's you know Bat, the Batman movie, mm-hmm. there hasn't been like a proper adaptation from comic to movies. Like I get Michael Keaton's Batman was like the first real superhero movie we ever got in the nineties. Yeah. Which was cool. Like it was groundbreaking. That that set the foundation. I guess not really because it didn't get you know it was probably ahead of its time. But I mean, outside of like that reason, like what else? Do you, what other reason do you have to bring back Michael Keaton? Nostalgia, like, really nostalgia <laughs> at that point. And, and who of us at that age is gonna sit there? Go, oh yeah, I'm gonna watch it for Michael Keaton's Batman. Yeah. I, I like Ben Affleck's version too. I mean, especially. Considering where his character was at, like he's older. He's I liked, kinda, I liked his too. Yeah, you know, darker. He's darker because like of the things that he's experienced. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, everybody hated him because he was the Batman who killed. Even though Batman has killed, he does kill. several times before Ben Affleck. Batman does kill. <laughs> I Keaton literally kicked the guy that had dynamite, shoved dynamite inside a guy, and kicked him, and smiled while doing it. Nobody ever talked about that. I mean, he killed Joker. Keaton killed Joker, yeah. He killed Joker. And, you know, and every other adaptation we've seen, what does Batman not do with the Joker? He does not kill him. Yep. Kilmer. He killed Two Face. Yeah. Technically, yeah. I know. And, I mean, and, you know, they're, they're parademons. You know, they're, they're, they're mindless henchmen. So, yeah. They're supposed to get killed by anybody. Uh, I've, I've never. <coughs> I want to say, like, Batman, sure, he tries to save everyone, but to say, like, oh, he doesn't kill, like, come on. Man. Like, he's a no-kill code? Yeah. Like, <sighs> it, it, it legit is yeah. yeah. Like, that car chase scene in Batman v Superman, how the hell else are you going to stop those guys? They have a, they have a turret on their car. Like, how, how else am I going to, you know, shoot them down without killing them? Exactly. Yeah. Like, come on, man. And plus, like, y'all played Arkham. Right. Batman has killed in that game. We just don't confirm it. But he's killed. He's killed. He's he's, he's, taking, he's taking bodies. <laughs> Detective mode. It will tell you. It will tell you uh, unconscious or deceased. Yep. <laughs> but, you'll, see, you'll see the heartbeat monitor. You'll right. know. But, yeah, and then Bat, Batgirl, I'm confused about that because, you know, you're bringing her in. And, like, J.K. Simmons is playing her father, Commissioner Gordon. I don't know if I like that to be honest. So and you, but the, but the problem is like you have Keaton who's going to be the Batman in that universe. J.K. Simmons is playing Gordon in the DC in Snyder in the Snyderverse. Yeah. So and Keaton and Gordon are basically the same age. Like yeah. If 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 we're talking about that, it's just it's weird. It so is I, weird. I don't again like I, if the, if the sole purpose of the Flash is not to reset the entirety of DC and just start all over. I'm out on the DC entirely after that. Hey, you you want to know how, like, right when I knew the Flash movie was already bad? 
now. When, when, hey, when they didn't do the Flashpoint storyline. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, like when they when they called it fa- Flashpoint, but they're not doing the flash. Like they they didn't cast Thomas um or not Thomas Wayne, Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Thomas Wayne as Thomas yeah. Wayne. That's what that's what the first mistake right there. Because I mean, let's be honest, the DCEU has not been perfect. It's been far from that. The least you could do is give the proper Flashpoint story, and then with the new heads at Warner Brothers, start fresh with everything. Right, like that's ideally what. You would have liked to happen. Yeah. But now there just seems to be more questions than answers to what exactly is the purpose of the Flash. For sure. Okay, I would ignore So the Kilmer and the and the Cloonies yeah. are out, which I mean. Kilmer, I mean, I probably wouldn't have raced there, but Clooney, hell yeah, I'll have to get rid of that. Just because Val Kilmer just, <laughs> he never really got, you know, that love in Hollywood. But Clooney, I can deal without the Batman credit card. <laughs> I can live without or the, that. Or the bat nipples. Or the bat nipples. But yeah. But, yeah, I don't know what DC's going to do. We'll I, see. I don't know. It's, it's confusing. I, I, I'm still waiting on to see what they do with Superman, bro. Like, how, I don't understand how a character like Superman can just be, like, passed so, by, like, yeah. you know, like, stepped on, and yeah. everybody just forgets about him, you know? Trust the new heads of Warner Brothers, DeAndre. Trust them. Shit. I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. Trust them. They will sure. They will do you right, I promise. And I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this on camera again. Man of Steel was a great movie. It was ahead of its time. Y'all weren't ready for it. I don't know, Kenneth, what, what do you think? You agree? Yeah. Man of Steel was a terrific movie. See, Javante's not here. You, you can speak your mind freely. Yeah, I'm going to speak my mind, man. All, everybody you can talking speak about, freely about Man of Steel. Everybody talking about, oh, man, it's too much destruction. Superman should have did this. Superman should have did this. But that, it's, just, but it's a realistic interpretation. It's a real, it's a legit realistic interpretation. Right. People don't forget that it was his first day on the job as Superman, and he was taking on a damn a, a whole <laughs> army of Kryptonian, Kryptonians that have the same power as him. Right. Come on now. But – what does it say? This suggests that Batgirl is part of the DCEU, but from a different continu- continuity to the Flash, meaning the Batman is Batgirl, is not the same Batman in, in the Flash, and <laughs> consequently, not the same Batman from Batman. This is why I hate DC. This is why I hate DC so much. What the fuck? Like, this, this is... This is he, and, you know, Marvel has its mom, but Marvel would never, like, let a timeline get jacked up like this. Yeah. I hate DC. God. I'm only going to watch it for the Robert Pattinson Batman movies, but after that, I'm out. If they don't get this right. Oh, hold on. Now, there there are some things I, I st- I'm still looking forward to. Black Adam, oh, yeah. from what I've seen, yeah. it looks good. I'm I, I, Like, that's yeah. one I'm actually really invested in, just because there's a lot of characters in that movie that... I actually love like Doctor Fate, like Hawkman. Hawkman, like I'm excited. Doctor Fate is the one, like I'm more hyped to see him than I am to see Black Adam in that yep. movie. Just, just like it's Doctor Fate, uh, Adam Smasher, Adam Smasher. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it has a pretty good cast. So Black Adam is one. I, they have the trailer coming out June 8th. So we'll be sure to do a trailer reaction for that on Trey and Jay. Be sure to tune in. And there you um, go. I forgot Pierce Brosnan is playing Doctor Fate. Amazing <laughs> casting. Is that it, though? Is that all? I can't think of anything else. Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. Oh, yeah, Blue Beetle. Yeah, you're, Blue right, Beetle. you're right. I mean, the suit, amazing. It looks, it looks so, straight from the comics. Like, one, I think it's one of the best, like, that I've seen as far as, like, taking something from the comics mm-hmm. to live action and using practical effects. Yeah. Rather than a CGI. Right. I, I don't know how they're going to do the mask. If they're going to maybe, like, do CGI with the emotions, kind of like Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Or if they're just going to have it where it's just like a mask like Iron Man. So that's something I'm curious to see what they do with that. But besides that, like, the suit's amazing. I I think they they casted the perfect actor for the role of Jaime Reyes. Right. Um, And, you know, this uh, thing about Blue Beetle, I think it's going to be awesome because, you know, he's a a superhero that's really going to connect with uh, people from the Latin community as well. Um, So, you know, it, it gives them their guy. (laughs) Because <laughs> I remember, like, they were uh, after Black Panther. <laughs> People always made those tweets. <laughs> who's who's the la- who's our Black Panther? Like, who's our version of Black Panther? Nacho Libre. Yeah, like, yeah. Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre. <laughs> El Tigre. 
We have we have El Tigre. <laughs> yep. And so, yeah. Now Blue Beetle will definitely be one that you guys can, right. can look okay. at. Okay. Well, so, yeah. Okay. You you got me. There's yeah. a couple, but <laughs> I need some continuity. I need a timeline established. I need I need you to build up towards something because we can't just have what you did just now. Oh no, work. but but here's my thing with with superhero <laughs> films. Does it necessarily need like that continuity? Like. Probably not, but just the way Marvel because Marvel is kind of the the example, right? Like yeah. you had Iron Man in 08, and then you had the Avengers in twenty twelve, and every film in between then uh to endgame, it all led up to this ultimate battle of good versus evil, right? Right. So I think that's kind of like the thing now people want is like they don't want like these solo films. They want the team ups, they want, you know, it all to lead towards like a final battle, like the league against dark side or, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem with the DCU to be with because they rushed it. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. They rushed Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. Like you didn't build the continuity with these characters. There was no background, uh, no development. And you just, you rushed in there and, and slapped in dark side and said, Hey, there's your big baddie. Go get him. Okay. Hey, can I be honest though? Dark side looked nice. And just, oh yeah, uh, for sure. Snyder's and he would body just... Thanos in two seconds. Oh, for sure. Easily. Yeah, he'll body, he'll body almost anybody in yeah. two seconds. Like, <coughs> and like, and credit to Ray Porter because the actor they got to do it for the voice. Because I was like, damn, he's scary. He's menacing. That is intimidating. Right. Um, you know, I I don't know what DC is gonna do. I me personally, if I if you're I was, fi- you're fine with like the standalone, as long as like good movies for now. Yeah, because we gotta establish like we gotta get the fans back thinking. Yeah, like, build oh, the trust. We may we like DC can make some good films. You yeah. know, like r- recently their track record has been pretty good. We we go back from the Batman, we go to TV series with Peacemaker, we go to the Suicide Squad. So recently, been good. Like considering, I would say we're what, four out of five, five out of six to me. Yeah, that, you know, I mean, that's fair. When I count Aquaman, Shazam, the Batman, Suicide Squad, I just take Wonder Woman is that one movie I feel like was a miss. Or as a prey. That as well. So yeah. Yeah. Five out of seven. That's not bad. Um, I don't know what they do. If if I was them, I think you can kind of do like a soft reboot. Keep certain characters. Like I would keep Henry Cavill as Superman. Shocker. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> keep his Superman. Because I, I, I would still love to see uh, a Superman 2, like a Man of Steel 2. I, right. have, I would love to see Brainiac on screen. You know, any yeah. Superman villain besides Lex Luthor, I would love to see. Um, or I mean, you have Luthor, Luthor, just not Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, you could do that. I would say, like, yeah, I would, I would say, I would do a soft reboot. Technically, no, you don't. I don't see what the problem would be as far as like, oh, maybe we can keep Zack Snyder's Justice League, just build off that. I mean, you don't necessarily need Zack Snyder to do. Maybe continue that. Could you do a soft reboot in the sense of take away the events that led up to Justice League? Sorry, what Batman v Superman two? No, take that out too. Okay, take. We don't need that. Okay, yeah, I, I you know, I would do that. Yeah, uh, why not? But then it it kind of gives you the freedom to either bring back Mo, Momoa and Gal Gadot, or kind of go in your own direction. Yeah, it would give you the freedom to kind of just you have Henry Cavill. As your Superman, but then if I if I keep Aquaman, because in Aquaman they reference like, hey, you helped like fight Steppenwolf, so you kind of would need Justice League. Uh, they'll fi- they'll they'll figure it out. Yeah, they got the old heads out of there. Because if I could, if I could, yeah, sure, I can get rid of Batman v Superman. I can get rid of Justice League. Just give keep Man still. We'll keep Wonder Woman and Aquaman. Like, oh Let, no, let's scrap Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four. Keep Shazam. Everything else, and kind of just build it up from and there. And just build, yeah, yeah, just build it up from you there. You do that. I don't know. But it's, I, a, it's a tough one. I did see in some Marvel news that uh, Dar- Daredevil got the green light officially. Yes, praise to uh, on Disney Plus. Yep, and I believe it's going to be like a continuation. Yeah, I think See, it's a right? it's a season four, I believe. Which yeah. man, thank thank you. Thank With Charlie, and, and obviously after you know No Way Home, when we when we saw it was confirmed that it was Charlie Cox playing Matt Murdock, it was bound to happen. Yeah. So I mean, look, this can either be a good thing, or it can be a bad thing for right. the Devil fans. Right, because you saw how bloody and gory the the Netflix show is. Yeah. And now, 
with Vincent, uh, with Vincent, you know, he was Kingpin Alfaro, and, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Hawkeye. Now it's just, a, and he was kind of nerfed, if we're going to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was nerfed. He got his ass whipped by a teenage girl. Yeah. So, like you said, it kind of just depends how they go about with Daredevil. Yeah. Like, either fans are going to love it, fans are going to hate it. Fan, some fans. They'll hate it. Some fans will hate it, but then they'll be like, you know what? I still, at least I have Daredevil in the MCU. Now he's in the MCU. Me. You'll hate it. You're going to hate I, it. I, I didn't say that. You're I'm saying gonna, it with I'm your face. Gonna, I'm just going to be like, you know what? We sold out, but <laughs> <laughs> we sold out for the quality of, hey, fuck it. We want Daredevil and Spider-Man team-ups and all this other shit. But, right. You know, it, hey, I'll say at least I have the first three seasons to watch to go back on. I I don't know how they'll do it though, but I I hope that they continue it, they keep it the same, you know, quality and content. Right. I just question because of Moon Knight, um you know, Kevin Feige said we're really going to push the boundaries of violence and you know, brutality and Moon Knight didn't feel that way to me. I don't know, did it feel that way to you? No, I mean, there were a couple there were you? there were a couple things where I thought, "Oh, that's different," but it didn't like push the needle for me. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. And like Doctor Strange, you know, pushed, but yet I don't think it broke anything. Because it was all, well, I think because it was strange, it was all magic based or like dark magic based violence. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And like even the blood on Wanda, that's oil from the, the Ultron. Ultron box. Yeah. And I mean, with Daredevil. What uh, she did to Charles Xavier, it happened, you know, that fast. So right. you can really see that. Yeah. And I mean, you know. With uh, Daredevil, obviously, it's gonna be a lot. Di- you get to handle that a lot differently because it's hand to hand combat. It's, you know, a lot more. <laughs> Shit! Just pull up kingpin scenes in Daredevil. <laughs> this That's man, some dark stuff, right? Yeah, there. decapitated a man with a car door. It's not like you can't. You can't really like go around that. Like you can't use magic or like. You know, Stark's, you know, repulse or like you can't like laser your way out of it. Like it's gonna have to be like, you know, brutal. How how are they gonna do with camera angles? Maybe they'll cut to different camera angles from behind, which I mean I like like terrible. what but we that, saw with Captain Carter. Yeah, like I think that would be that's Marvel's out. That's how they would do it. Yeah. In my they just wouldn't show it. Yeah. But you like they'll give you the you can obviously tell what's happening. But I don't know as a fan, I wouldn't want that. Like that's that's something where I would watch and I'd be like, okay, this Trash, like yeah, can't if have... yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Especially when you get their Netflix story had done, you know, three seasons worth of Daredevil, and odds are it probably won't be, you know, the same level of blood and gore. Yeah, and me, me and Javante were talking about this too because we we mentioned like, oh well, you know, you want to keep it consistent, but also like if you're gonna tie him into some of these characters, like Spider Man, you know, Spider Man's. He's a guy who attracts like a very kid friendly audience. So if you connect him, you know, he won't be as violent in Spider Man versus other characters. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Marvel could do that. I would actually approve of them doing that just because, hey, you know, maybe he's not as violent in the Spider Man movie or crossover or series crossover event. But as, as long as I can go back to his show and still get that full context of his character and like what he, what he does. Um, and you know, plus like daredevil punisher, most of those guys, like they kind of, they kind of do their own thing. Like they're very, they're, they don't have like a morale code. Yeah. They're, they don't have a morale code. And also, um, rather than Spider-Man, they don't get involved with like team ups, like Avengers and all that shit. Right. You know, they don't fight the supernatural. Like they're daredevil and Punisher are the guys who protect the inner city, you know, the urban, you know, they, they fight for the urban lives of, uh, you know, those, the gang violence, the mafias, all that. So, right. I feel like that's, that should be like it's MCU's own thing. We're like, Hey, this is our own little section of the MCU where we go deep into the inner city and shit is violent. Shit is brutal. So that's what you expect with some with these characters, right? So I think you nailed that. I think, um, I mean, gee, honestly, you just, you just said that perfectly. That's a perfect scenario right there. If you're Marvel, to where it will allow you to be a little more realistic with yeah. some of those characters who, quite simply, they've they have things that they do that you just really can't like 
ignore. Yeah, you can't censor it. Yeah. Well, that would work. I mean, and then, you know, if you want to have them come in for, like, a big team up to where you know they're there, but you're not going to show them on screen as much. Yeah. You know. I'm not going to show their level of violence on screen. Yeah, you know, but I, you know they're there. Yeah, but I'll be like, you know what? Hey, that's fine. I've got the show to look back on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Show to watch. That could work. You know? Kenneth, what do you think? Ah, uh, man. Damn it. I got to make Kenneth. the whole again. No, I was saying, like, if they brought um, characters like Daredevil, like, let's say they kept the violence from the first three seasons of Daredevil with his show. But, like, you bring him into, like, let's say the next Spider-Man movie. Some of his shit is censored in Spider Man. Yeah. That's that's fair to that because it's it's not Daredevil's audience that was like this is Spider Man's audience. Right. Which is a story. But if it opens up a Daredevil wide open, it needs to be Daredevil's audience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, that would work. It was rough. It was rough. Yeah. The CGI in in the in the original trailer was rough. But the Marvel went back and fixed it. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm excited for She-Hulk. It looks good. You it know, looks good. I'm it, excited. It surprised me. I'm not going to lie. I was like, hey, She-Hulk, I'm not really excited for this show, but then I watched the trailer. It's It actually has some uh, pretty funny humor. Yeah, I'm interested in it. Yeah. You know, then obviously you have Mark Ruffalo coming back as Hulk. Yeah, uh, which I don't know if you noticed, like, his hand is fit, so I guess that's... Uh, yeah, but also it's kind of weird because in She-Hulk, it's like Professor Hulk still. He's like Hulk still. Yeah. But in Shang Chi, at the end credits, at the end credits, and he's he's Bruce Banner. So I don't know. I'm interested. I'm inter. I'm interested. In Daredevil, wasn't he like dressed as him in one of the comics? Yeah. Oh, well, that could be something. Okay. But I'm interested in She Hulk. The CGI was fixed, so you know, obviously, that's a sigh of relief. Um. And then Tim Roth come back as Abomination, yeah. which is, he was one of the good takeaways from the Incredible Hulk movie, I felt like. And I say, I'm saying this for the third time. <laughs> I actually place the Incredible Hulk higher than a lot of people will when it comes to MCU movies. I, I, I think it's just because it's forgotten about. Yeah, it's forgotten about. I think the script could have been better, but to me, that shit was peak Hulk. You're not wrong. Like, that, that was a Hulk you're not, like, you're, you're not I look wrong on screen, I'm like, okay, this guy was a badass. Because he, I think he was like the perfect combination, especially when he was fighting. Like he was smart, he was tactical. Like he knew, he knew to fight based on his surroundings. Yeah. You know, like he, when he's fighting Abomination, he sees the uh, cop car, he splits it in half and uses them as boxing gloves. He he sees the the plane catch on fire. What does he do? He claps his hands together to put the fire out. You know, I I haven't seen Mark Ruffalo's Hulk do shit like that. He just smashes. Yeah, and I and, and I think it also like the Incredible Hulk. When I look at the character of Bruce Banner, I've always seen him as this loner. So like based on the old Hulk TV shows, you know, always hitchhiking. Dun, 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 yeah, you know, the sad music. That's that's what uh, Edward Norton I think was captured Shooting that for. perfectly. Yeah. yeah, but then with Ruffles, you kind of got like the team up Avenger. Yeah, you know, the brains of the group, if you will. For sure. For sure. Which worked, but um, I'm excited for Shigo. Did you watch the uh, new? Did you watch the new Thor: Love and Thunder trailer? Yes, yes. I'm in, I'm excited for it. And I apologize. You know, I was the person I came on this show. I was criticizing Gore how he looked in them damn. He toys. looks terrifying. He looks menacing. I'm not gonna lie. He looks pretty menacing. Um, I still prefer. That they would have took more of the comic book inspiration for, you know, what his character looks like. Um, Because he does look intimidating, but at the same time, like, I've seen his character before. Like, he looks, to me, you've never seen the uh, Hellboy 2, but he Mm -hmm. reminds me of the character from Hellboy 2. You know, the prince. So, there's that. I mean. She looks awesome. She does. So, So, Jane got snapped away. I yeah the mask I I didn't I don't like that that shit you you are you know it's CGI yeah but uh so Jane do you think Jane got snapped away yes because she says Same. you know it's been what three or three or four years yep. and the Thor like really like eight to yep 
eight years and six months and mm-hmm. you know x amount of days so. I, I think jane did get snapped away because i mean that's the only way you would kind of explain how thor became you know fat thor and and um oh go ahead Yeah. Okay. I see that. I could be. I can. I could. I could see that. So they would be the the leaders of the young Avengers. What you're saying? Yeah. Huh. I will say, like, despite Gore literally just looking like Christian Bale, who's bald with like black, you know, stripes and whatever, he still looks terrifying. Yeah. He looks like a guy who would probably kill gods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like, hope, I hope that whole room of gods that they show in this trailer. I'm, I'm like Christian Bale got to murk at least half of them, bro. <laughs> oh, Zeus is definitely getting murked. Like, yeah, because you see uh, Valkyrie with the lightning bolt. So yeah, hey, yeah, Gore got to put it. Hey, he got to like you just can't call him Gore the God Butcher and, and not have, have him kill, him kill any kill gods. gods. Like, yeah. I actually got to see this man put in work in this movie. Agreed. Um, I like that scene with him in the void with, I think, the, either the void or his, like, uh, home world with Thor. And, like, it's black and white. I wonder if they're actually going to do that in the movie. I hope so. Where, like, they fight and it's just black and white. That would be kind of really cool. It's just kind of crazy how, like, literally, like, the first two Thors are, like, people, like, rank him as, like, you know, one of the worst Marvel movies. But then, potentially. I enjoyed the first one. The first one's the first solid. One's good. Yeah. Well, they're, like, lower tier MCU films. And then, you know... Ragnarok to a lot of people is like a top five film, and then potentially, depending how this goes, this could be like another top ten, maybe top five film. So yeah. Thor literally has like the best of the best, and then the worst of the worst. And the fact that Thor got four movies and Iron Man and Cap only got three, it's like damn. But... Oh, but well, they got Civil War though. That's I count that as like another one for both of them because they're both in it pretty That's much true. throughout the entirety. That's true. Um, what was I mentioning? Oh yeah, I think. Jane, because uh, you know the way that he became all big in Thor in Avengers Endgame. Because mm-hmm. I feel like if he would have had Jane in his life, like if Jane was there, he probably would have went to her after being all depressed about losing his brother and all that. Like you know that would have been a person like because if you think about it, even hey you had those days where <laughs> if you ever um, were going through something you had no one else wouldn't you call your ex girlfriend. Might as well. If you were in a situation, I would. <laughs> if you know, if you, if you felt you were responsible for you know the fate of half the universe because you didn't go for the head, yeah. So I I see Jane being away during the snap and her getting cancer yeah. after it because that's what might lead to her getting Thor's power, right? So I'm excited. Now, will it be the best superhero flick of the year? I don't know. We'll no, see. Hey, the Batman. The hey, Batman for me is number one right you know, now. You know what's funny? I think of, uh, have you ever seen the movie Don John? With, um, damn, Joseph Gordon-Levitt? No. Oh, God. Okay. Anyway, it's a guy, he's obsessed with watching porn. Okay. So, that, like, he does all this other shit. Like, he works out. Like, he, like, just dating Scarlett Johansson in the movie. He just top tier so I, I would say that's like top tier scarlett johansson okay um but anyway like each time like he that he's messing around with these different girls or whatever he's like you know she has great ass she has great tits sex is great but it still ain't better than porn and that's <laughs> and he goes back to watching porn because like you know that's his thing so that's what that's what i feel like when i'm watching when it comes to all these other superhero movies coming out i'm like hey thor it's going to have great humor, great action, great story. But it's not Batman. But it's still not better than Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it's still not better than the Batman, I'm telling you. Right. I can feel that. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, it's just kind of wild how, like, nowadays, like, we're all waiting for, like, superhero films to come out every year. But, like, you know, back then, I mean, you had Spider-Man, you had the X-Men, Fantastic Four. Yeah. And, and the wait between those like films, right. those sequels, like sometimes it would take years, like exactly three years for the second for the you know in between sequels. Now it's like, hey, we we got a movie coming out in the very next year. Yeah, and then she got one coming out like three months after. Yeah, and sometimes I think it it is like 
a lot of these movies, the sequels, it is the same time period. Like, like let's say Thor comes out this year. If they made another one, it would come out three years. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't feel that long anymore because we have so much stuff in between. In between, you know. And then eventually, something will like tease or tie into the next exactly. Thor movie. So, um, Kenneth, how are we doing on time? Uh, how are we doing on time, dude? Okay. Real quick, DeAndre, I got a little fun question. Kenneth, you can hop on this too if you want. Ooh, let's go. Uh, in honor of Thor coming out, we just saw Doctor Strange uh, that got dropped. Give me, now it may sound generic, but it has a lot of opportunities. Give me your top five MCU movies. Top five MCU movies. Actually, top ten. We'll make it a little more, because I feel like everyone has like the same five. Okay. Give me your top ten. Top ten. I'll say number one. One, I'll probably go Infinity War. Okay. Two, Civil War. Three. Three, I'll probably go um, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Okay. Fuck, you put me in a hard position. Four. The Avengers. The, first the original one? one? Yeah, the okay. first one. Um, five, I'll put Black Panther. Okay. Six. I'll say like Thor Ragnarok. Okay. Seven Iron Man. Okay. First one. And where are we at? Eight. Oh, yeah. There we go. Eight, I'll put Spider Man uh, No Way Home. Okay. Nine, I'll put Endgame. Okay. Endgame is that low for you? Huh? Endgame is that low for you? Yeah. Okay. It's good, but you know. Okay. I think I think one problem with Endgame is just like I have there's so many like questions that pop up from the movie. The time traveling. Time travel. Yeah, that's a big one for me. Yeah, I I can understand that. Yeah. X Men is the future past. Got time travel right. Yeah. Underrated flick, by the way. For sure. Hmm. What am I at? Nine or ten? That's my ten number. You put in game at I put in game at nine, okay. Uh um, you got one more. Ten, I'll probably put Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Yeah. Did you did you say Winter <laughs> Soldier? Yeah, I said Winter Soldier. Alright, dude, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have the exact same ten you do except for one. Uh different order, but I like nine of your ten in really? my top ten. Ken, if you were shaking your head. Ken, what you... What you... Huh? Um, I, w- I would say probably just because, like, the characters, like, you know, from comic books, like, I wasn't really a big Guardians fan. So you didn't know, you didn't know the who movies. they were. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know exactly much about them until the movies came out, and then I liked them from that. And then, like, most of the characters, most of the movies before those, uh, that I read before, I was familiar with those characters in comics and seeing them in live action. So it's just kind of like that connection. All right, Ken, you're cook- you're cooking over there. You want me to go, or you got your list? Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> All right, here's coming from mine. Number one, Endgame. Okay. You're laughing. Okay, Ken. Okay. <laughs> you really know I got like number two then. Number two, Spider-Man: No Way Home. It's the nostalgia, but you know what? Screw you, Kenneth. The nostalgia works. Damn. The nostalgia <laughs> works. It gets it gets me every time. Kenneth has left the building. Uh, three is Infinity War. Okay. Four is Winter Soldier. Five is Black Panther. Six is Civil War. Seven is Ragnarok. Eight is Iron Man. Nine is Guardians. And ten is Shang-Chi. Okay. I don't really hate. I don't hate your list. I mean, I, 
You know, yeah, I do hate your list. How the hell you got? Well, <laughs> come on, man, Spider Man No Way Home. Hey, it gave me it gave me the Spider Man that I've been wanting. Okay. That's how we always justify it. At the end, I yeah. Got okay, but also, <laughs> hey, also the fact that it took three movies just to do that when it should have been established right from the jump. At the very least, could have been two. We did not need Far From Home. We did, we didn't need we that. Didn't, we didn't need it. You're right. We did not. But I mean, the, you know, with the nostalgia. You know, like who would have thought Toby? Andrew, you bring back these classic villains, and it, it all helps Peter become, or I guess it helps Tom Holland Spider Man become the Spider Man that he needed to be. Okay. Not the Avenger, not the Iron Man Junior, but his own person. By the way, was this list top ten favorite or top ten best MCU films? Your personal top ten. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Is that is that is, is, yeah, it, is yours true. accurate? Yeah, that, no, okay. mine's accurate. Okay. Yeah, mine's accurate. Yeah, 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 those are much my top ten personals. Okay. Um. I think the only thing we had different was you had the Avengers in yours, and I have oh, yeah. Shang Chi in mine instead. So why 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 isn't the Avengers in yours? Um, as great as it is, because it is groundbreaking for what it was at the time, right? Um, I just feel like it's the first one, but like everything else, outdid what the Avengers did. I guess if that makes sense. Okay. But it's 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 eleven on my list. Okay. So it's like right outside the top ten. That's nice. But Shang Chi, kind of like Black Panther in a way, like it, it's it's a diverse cast of film. It's different, mm-hmm. and you kind of get you kind of get more of that um, Asian culture mixed into it, and it's just different, which I really liked. It was a great origin movie, and kind of it gave you like a different kind of Marvel movie. Actually, I'm just kidding. My top ten actually is Eternals, Captain Marvel, <laughs> <laughs> um, Spider Man, <laughs> uh, Far From Home, Iron Man Two, Iron Man Three, Black Widow, Ant Man of the Wasp, um, Captain Marvel. Already so wait, said. you consider Iron Man Two trash? I actually like. No, it. No, no, I like it. Oh, okay, well, I, I'm one of the few people that enjoy Iron Man yeah. Two I and Three. Uh, they're not bad. Like people, there's people who rate Iron Man three above Iron Man two. I'm like, no. Iron Man two and Iron Man three, they're not bad, but if you compare it to like Cap's trilogy, or I guess I would put it over Thor still, and Spider Man's. But I mean, get what I'm saying? Because I I would put Incredible Hulk over Iron Man three. You didn't like Iron Man three all that much? Mm, that was okay. You like it? You like two more though, right? Yeah, I, I like. See, two. this is this is why I love I love Iron Man two. It gave you Nick Fury. It gave you Black Widow. Yeah. It gave you Don Cheadle as Rhodey. Technically, it gave you Peter Parker. <laughs> Just thinking from that one random kid oh, in the Iron Man helmet was actually Peter Parker. Yeah, Whiplash was a little weak. I'm not gonna lie. And I and I, I'm assuming with Iron or with Armor Wars, you're gonna get more of a you know Justin Hammer kind of expansion on his. I didn't think about that. Yeah, you would get him back. Maybe get some redemption in that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, those are our top ten MCU films. Let me next week when Javante is here, we can uh, oh, yeah, do some other kind of list. Oh God, no, because I'm sure he'll have something to say. Hey, uh, I'm telling you right now, if, it, <laughs> if you ask me the top comic book films, hey, some I was of, different. Some of these getting pushed out. Yeah, it's I'm different. Right top ten comic book films is different. I'm we can do that. that. You, you know that next week. Yeah, I'm, I, we can do that next week. We we'll do that next week. Top yeah. ten comic book films of all time. Yeah, because yeah, mine's entirely different. Because that you'll probably only get like five, maybe. Four Marvel film MCU films in this. Agreed. But yeah, you're <laughs> that's, right, how, you're that's right. how much it is. Uh, uh, Kenneth, what what about yours, man? You say off air. Okay. You don't got a mic over there, so no one's gonna hear his Spider Man hating list. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna wrap things up, folks. Make sure you like, subscribe. If you have questions you want us to answer, drop them in the comments section. Um, Will we and, actually answer them this time? <laughs> yeah, I, we, I need to get back on. I'm gonna start posting them again every week, but we we will get we will answer questions if you comment. Uh, from the final draft, this has been Alec. This is DeAndre Kenneth by the boards. Until then, we'll see you guys next week. Sour Kids Productions.